There are many things that you do throughout the day that makes your trip safer, from hanging your food at night to cooking far away from where you are sleeping so that the local wildlife doesn't think that there is a buffet being prepared for them inside of your tent, to preemptively wrapping your toes in leuco tape to get ahead of the blisters. But what do you do to stop yourself from getting sick? What do you do to avoid that extremely uncomfortable visit to a doctor or even a hospital far from your home? And how do you keep your eyes healthy on the trail if you have to put your contacts in every day? These are all questions that took me the better part of my first through hike to really figure out and today I'm going to show you guys exactly what I learned. If you are like me and like to wear contacts when you hike, then it's totally understandable that you might be a little bit worried about getting germs in your eyes since you can't wash your hands every single time that you need to put them in and take them out. I personally never had any infections or issues with my eyes. I used hand sanitizer before touching my eyes and made sure that there was absolutely no debris on my hands. Plus, when I put in and took out my contacts, I actually never touched my eyes. I did carry my glasses with me as well for those days where my allergies got bad and I couldn't wear my contacts, or just when I wanted to give my eyes a break. All of this was a bit of a hassle and I had to carry a lot of extra stuff. But it's just what I have to do, and unless I want to get eye surgery before my next through hike, I'm going to be doing the same thing. Even though your feet can get pretty darn nasty on any backpacking trip, your hands and fingers are actually the most dangerous when it comes to being unsanitary on the trail. Touching anything with lots of germs and then touching your face or cooking and eating can lead to you getting sick or getting infections. When I got about halfway through the trail, I actually ended up in the hospital for a night with what we believe was neurovirus, which is definitely not something you wanna be dealing with while on a trek like this. And I'm not the only one that actually went through this. Killer also got sick at the same time, and we would fairly often hear about it going through one of the hostels along the trail. One hiker that we met back in 2020 when we first attempted to do the Appalachian Trail went on to do the PCT last year while we were out on the AT, and she got neurovirus as well. This is Cascade. Earlier on in your through hike? I got really sick. Yeah, you got really sick? Yeah, that was the other one. Yeah. Um, it was just norovirus. Just neurovirus, you but, know. It's I mean, like, <laughs> so I know a lot of other people who also got norovirus in the desert on the PCT, and it was like a two or three day thing for them. They were just a little bit sick, like it was kind of gross, and then they were fine again. But for me, it was a full nine days of like misery. Uh, I was like 20 miles out of Big Bear when it hit me, and then I couldn't like, I basically was passed out mm -hmm. and nobody really knew where I was. Um, I didn't have like a way to connect to anybody and I was just like, uh, I pitched my tent a little bit away from the trail and I didn't eat or drink anything for four days. I had to hike another like 30 miles to get out um, and I was melting snow for water. I tried to make it six miles to the next water the next day, but I couldn't do it. You're saying Even that the snow experience point. was worse than this? Yes. <laughs> wow. That, uh, <sighs> I don't know, maybe it wasn't. I'm sure it's hard to explain because yeah. you are the one that went through it, I mean. Yeah. Now, you're probably thinking, well, it's clearly not possible to stay 100% clean while on the trail. And well, sadly, it's true. But there are definitely some things that you can do to reduce your chances of getting sick and to even strengthen your immune system while you're out on the trail. So I'm going to give you my five tips to getting yourself as prepared as possible for your trip. Tip number one, carry your hand sanitizer someplace that you can reach it quickly and easily, like hanging it off your shoulder strap with a carabiner. This way you won't be tempted to not use it when you really should, just because you don't want to take your backpack off and waste time and energy digging through your pack just to get hand sanitizer out. Tip number two, and this one's a little bit more for how you can protect the people around you along with yourself on the trail. Dig a cat hole. I cannot emphasize this enough. I'm trying not to get mad here, but I had some pretty rough experiences on the trail when it came to stepping in other people's crap. So carry a trowel, it's worth the extra weight, or use a stick or however you're gonna do it, but just do it. The amount of times that I have gone to do my business, and in the process of just looking for a good spot that's out of sight for me to go, I step in someone else's crap, and it is disgusting. 
and I hope that you never have to go through that. Odds are though, wherever you are going, it's fairly probable that someone else has gone there before. And then, later that night when you're taking your shoes off, you forget that you stepped in that earlier and you just got something on your fingers that you really do not want to have. And this is definitely one of the biggest ways that I believe you can get sick on the trail, especially with neurovirus. Tip number three, carry some wet wipes. They may seem pretty heavy to carry, but honestly, if you use them every day, it's only going to get lighter and lighter until you resupply but it is totally worth keeping some on hand just to keep yourself fresh. And hey, maybe you might be able to afford going an extra day or two without having to go into town just to take a shower. So honestly, this tip might even save you some money. All right, tip number four, pretty easy and self-explanatory, but honestly, there were times on the trail where I didn't even do it and I regret it big time, but clean your hands before eating and before touching your face every time as I'm, you know, touching my face right now. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's a really hard habit to break. But this goes into effect, especially if you're wearing contacts. And another thing that you should do, definitely if you have contacts, but even if you just have the habit of touching your face a lot with your hands, is to keep your fingernails trimmed. I carried a very small set of clippers with me the entire way through the trail. Germs actually have the perfect hiding spot right underneath the edge of your nails. I just want to step in real quick and say that I really hope that none of this freaks you out about your upcoming trip. That's not how this is intended at all. I just want to make sure that you are as prepared as possible. It is still safe out there and it's honestly still going to be safer touching things out there than if you walk around your local grocery store and touch something that a thousand other people have touched that exact same day. And not everyone gets neurovirus when they go on the trail. I was very unlucky, Killer was very unlucky, Cascade was extremely unlucky with what happened with her last year. And we do know of other people who got sick, but it wasn't just that, there were other things like limes, and again, I'm not trying to scare you, but these are things that you should definitely think about while you're out on the trail, and do things like spraying your clothes with permethrin constantly. I probably did it a total of six times throughout the entire hike. It's something that a lot of people just forget to do. Um, and again, all the tips that I'm listing off right now about keeping clean, it's very important and it really does help to reduce your risk of getting sick. And to be honest, I didn't really pay that much attention to this until after I got sick and learned my lesson the hard way. The rest of the trail went great, I was very careful, and things just got a lot better. Alright, so tip number five and arguably the most important tip, okay, now, all of these tips are very important, but this one kind of hits home for me uh, just because, again, I, did, I had some pretty uh, crappy experiences with it. But take lots of caution when using privies, especially on the Appalachian Trail. On a lot of other trails, there aren't really too many places like this to go do your business. You're just going out and doing, going in the woods. But along the Appalachian Trail, at almost every single shelter, actually, I'm pretty sure at every single shelter and even some other places, there are privies. When you go to a restaurant in your local town, odds are that bathroom is being cleaned every single day. And there's probably just as many people using that bathroom as there are on the AT every day. Um, but the privies along the trail, some of them were very well maintained, but other ones, it was pretty obvious that they were not cared for hardly at all. And I'm not like pointing any fingers at anyone, it's just how it is. I mean, it's the bathroom in the middle, middle of the woods, you know. Someone's got to walk all the way out there just to clean it every single day. They're not gonna, you know, not everyone can do that. <laughs> and honestly, for me, it's not even so much if it just looks dirty because, you know, I can do some cleaning myself before I use the bathroom. But when I open up the door to a privy and there's a swarm of flies in there all over the toilet, you know exactly where those flies have been and you don't want to be sitting on a privy, in a privy, getting bit by those same flies. It's just that that's, I don't even need to explain that one to you to be honest. So I'm going to leave it up to your own gut decision. Uh, I'm not at all saying to avoid all privies. I use a lot of privies. They're very, very handy and they do a great job of disposing of your waste in an environmentally friendly way. As long as, you know, us hikers use them correctly. I mean, every single privy you use has a sign that it basically tells, it gives you step-by-step -step directions of how it works, which I love. I love that they key you in on exactly what's 
going on underneath you. <laughs> it just really sucks when you really have to go and you go up to a privy and open the door if it even has one and a swarm of flies and a swarm of flies comes out at you. Like it just, it, it's very off-putting. So when it comes down to keeping yours and everyone else around you's experiences happy and clean on the trail, just do your part, it's not that hard. Whether you are doing it for leave no trace reasons because you deeply, deeply care about the environment, or for keeping the people around you for many miles safe and happy, or you're purely just out there for yourself, please just do it. It doesn't matter what you're out there for, just do your part. I have learned so much from my own experiences on the trail and I am nowhere near perfect. I have made my mistakes, I have done my stupid stuff. So I, I'm not trying to tell you that I've done everything correctly from day one. Heck, on my very first backpacking trip, it took me the first week and a half to find out that I was supposed to hang my food at night, let alone why I'm supposed to hang my food at night. So I really do hope that you got something out of this video. If you have anything to add, please drop it down in the comments below. Go ahead and if you felt like I missed out, maybe someone will have already commented it. So just go check out the comments. I'd love to have a conversation with you about it and just hear and maybe even learn some things from you. That's it for the video today, guys. Don't forget to smash that like button. It really does help me to get my messages out to as many people as possible. And I'll just see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.